Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Chefs and Lambos by Chef David Hill. This is episode 14 and we have a guest here that's uh, very similar to my lifestyle of doing private events. Chef, I'll let you introduce yourself. I am Chef Sam Sorensen. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Well, Sam, let me, let me start here. Like, um, what brings you to Florida? Were you born and raised here? Where are you from originally? So I'm actually from Minnesota. Um, okay. I grew up there. I lived there until I was like 13. And then my family moved down here. And obviously when you're 13 and your family moves, you move with them. You didn't have a choice. Nah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I love it here. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And, and what me. area were you in? Fort Myers? I was or? in Cape Coral, actually. Cape Coral. And is that where you're at now? I'm in Fort Myers now, actually. Okay. So, okay. Because yeah. that commute, boy, that Cape. <laughs> yeah, the that, Cape is, is that rough. That bridge will get you. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. <laughs> um, when you were, like, growing up as a young kid, what made you feel like you wanted to be a chef? Or what was your... Well, to be honest with you, growing up, I didn't want to be a chef at all. Like, it wasn't, like, a thought in my head. Like, I grew up kind of, like, poor, like, lower, you know, middle class kind of thing. Huh. And um, my family thought like Olive Garden was fancy, like that kind of <laughs> stuff. Grew up on like McDonald's and uh -huh. like Stouffer's and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So I actually wanted to be a, a tattoo artist and like a like an artist. I went cool. to art school. Okay. Um, I didn't decide to be a chef until a lot later when I kind of fell into it. So, okay. But like, yeah. what was your like liking that you knew you had this kind of skill to do it? Like, like oh, I, uh, so I okay so later like. I was like 20, 21, something like that. I moved to New York with my wife, my fiance at the time, my okay. wife. Yeah. Um, and I started working in this restaurant and I saw like how people were and how service went and like how really good food is. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's what made me want to be a chef. You know, it was something practical. It was something artistic. It was creative. It, it left a lot of room for like like change and stuff, you know, there's something to learn from it. You, yeah. You know, if you keep going, you're always going to have something to learn and to gain. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really what got me into it. What know? was the cuisine? Like what kind of food were they serving? So that was uh, Budokan, New York. Oh um, yeah, I know that place. So it's, it's, you know, Cantonese, traditional Chinese. It's kind of like a fusion of American style stuff too. Right. Um, so it was like the wok cooking, the, the dim sum, the you know, the fish station where they carve the fish every day, where they're doing Peking ducks in the back, like that kind of food. And right. it was like 1,200 covers average a night. And I was like, I was in it. <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome, you know? When you started, where were you? Was it like Garmage or where were you in the production part of it? So the first station I ever worked was the um, dim sum station. Okay. So I was in, responsible for all the, the dumplings, you know, like just executing them. They had like, you know, 10, 15 people that would come in and make dumplings all day and then like whatever. Okay. But yeah, that was the first thing I did. Garmage 2, that was after, which is kind of backwards, but that's how it worked out okay. for me. Okay. Um, I did the fish station, I did the meat station, and I did a little bit of the wok station too. But how, how long would they keep you at each station before you moved up or whatever? How did that mean, work? It really depended. Like it depends on who you are, what your interests were. Um, I was just starting out, so I didn't really know anything, you yeah. know? Um, so I was on the, the dim sum station probably like six months or something like that. And then I would just kind of like, when we were slow or whatever, just kind of like go around other stations and figure stuff out. And they saw me take an interest in it and kind of help me progress. You know? Right. And there was a lot of like really talented cooks there too that like, oh, I'm sure, you know, these, they see you want to do something. They're from like CIA or like Johnson and Wales or whatever. Um, what is it? Ice up there too. Like, you know, there's a lot okay. of, you know, good schools up there and the kids like, they want to teach you something because that's how they learn too. So I was very fortunate with that. I imagine at a restaurant like that, there's not too much creative freedom because you're following that same menu yep. year round, right? Yeah. Or maybe it's seasonal a little bit. Do they change it a little bit? Yeah, they do like different dumplings. They'll do different specials. It's probably like twice a year they change. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's been like a long time. But um, yeah, it wasn't a lot of creative freedom. But for me, that was fine because I was learning, you know. Uh -huh. I didn't need creative freedom. I needed to learn how to do this thing. And right. Go right. from there, you know? And then when you were in that kind of like level of learning, did you actually go to culinary school? No kind of? Nope, I never okay. went to culinary school. By okay. the time I started thinking about it, I talked to some of my chefs, like some of the people I really respected there. And they were like, why would you do that? Like you already have knife skills. You already like have a basic understanding of like sauces and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, just keep working on that, do your own <clears> stuff. And they, they're having me like, turn potatoes and stuff at this place like uh -huh. they were helping me with that like um 
So I kind of got like on the job, you know, training there. And it was really cool because they didn't have to do that for me. You yeah. Know? But, but they did. They would have me write like reports on like um, salts or like different butters and stuff like that. And it's like, thank you for taking the time to do that. Like, wow. you know, if they ever see this. That sounds like a good experience. That. It was, yeah. And I've, I've tried to do that same kind of thing for people you know now because that was awesome now what about like with that i know like that food is a certain style so where did you kind of get well-rounded where you're just not fusion japanese and doing well um okay so after that i took an interest in you know cooking stuff like that mm -hmm. before that i had worked at another like i'd worked at a paleo place too uh oh, kitchen wow. off of fifth avenue in new york city um i kind of learned about that kind of cuisine that's totally different obviously but right I learned about that that was kind of more american focused and then so i kind of had that background i'm uh german norwegian so i kind of had i have a little bit of that in the back of my you know okay. back of my repertoire um after that i worked at like you know and this is skipping around a bit but it was like i worked at il buco elementari that's in um, new york that's uh -huh. italian food that's michelin yeah. recommended i worked at um you know city vineyard i worked at uh terroir tribeca it's kind of more Tapa style food. I've worked at, you know, I've just worked in a couple different places that really, they help me hone different skills. Yeah. You know? And then catering, you kind of have to do everything. Right, right. <laughs> so that kind of, you know, made me pick up the stuff I didn't have already. You know, it's not like I'm an expert or anything, but, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot to be said about catering. In the New catering. York area, I know it's like a constant grind where it's always busy, mm -hmm. but out of all those places, which one did the most volume? <sighs> Budokan. 100%. Yeah, that's yeah, what I would guess. Kind of did the most. Uh, but it didn't feel like it as much because you had like 12 line cooks. You mm -hmm. know, you had two or three sous chefs. You had prep guys in the back. You had the chef, the expediting, you know, the executive chef or the executive sous, whoever's there. Um, but then there's like those smaller ones that I worked at that were, you're like one of two line cooks, you mm -hmm. know, and there's no prep guy. So it's like two of you getting like destroyed and you have to like keep going, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it really depends on what you're doing. And how many people you're doing, you mm -hmm. know? Because 40 could feel like a lot if you're by yourself. You know oh, I mean? of course. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. When, when you were kind of like going through all the cooking and learning all that stuff, did you have like a, a an idea in your head of what you wanted to be as far as like future-wise? Like as far as like either a restaurant chef or, hey, I want to own a catering company. Did you have an idea or, or like a goal? Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of goals. and it, It's like I try to take goals, you know, I have a five-year goal. I have a one-year goal, stuff like that. Coming up, I wasn't sure. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do because okay. I had been experienced. I had experienced like restaurants. I, had, you know, I hadn't done the country club thing yet. I've done that in Florida, um, and I've seen like a little bit of catering. Like I did some catering with Who Kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we did like corporate events, stuff like that. But it wasn't really until I got down here until I saw it, um, and. At that point, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I haven't mm -hmm. really known exactly this is what I want to do until the last couple months. To be gotcha. honest with you. Yeah. Um, and I really made my mind up. And then when you leave from New York to arrive here, what would, what did you think of the food scene here? Like, like what were your thoughts? Because I mean, it's, it's so different. different. It's a lot different. So different. Yeah. So in New York, there's like, um, you know, there's that that high seasonality. You know. I used to go to the Union Square Green Market all the time because I love it and I think it's one of the best places in the world, honestly. Okay. Um, you know, so up there it's like when you're a sous chef or like whatever, you have to go there in certain restaurants mm -hmm. and pick up stuff every single day and that's what you come up with a special for and you can do that like home cooking too. You know, yeah. like you're gonna see these squashes you've never seen before. You're gonna see herbs you've like never seen because there's this guy in Vermont who's making them for some reason. Right. And you just kind of get to play with them, yeah. Some reason. For, yeah, for, but you're like, wow, thanks for doing that. Yeah, you yeah. Um, uh -huh. And then you come down here and it's like, seasonal, this is what the very people seasonal. want yeah. and this is what you're gonna give them. And it's like what you do to make it different is really like the only difference. Like there's there's a lot of good food here. You know, there is. There's a lot of, you know, really great chefs here. There's a lot of cool cool people, but like the clientele, um, some of them are very stuck in what they want. And that's right. okay. You right. Know, that's what right. it is. Right, right. So it's just, it's it was a big jump. And I was used to it because I'm, you know, lived here. But like, it's a big jump from do literally anything to like, you're gonna do this, but kind of do it however you want to do it. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. Okay. So a little bit of freedom. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it does. But see, like, um, I'm from Michigan and I thought like the biggest change was 
just like the ingredients. You're going to oh, work yeah. with mangoes, papayas, mm -hmm. you know, it's all tropical. And like from up north, we're doing like apples and <laughs> yeah. cherries yeah. and, you know, just. Yeah. So, so for me, like the big thing was like getting into this tropical stuff because I remember working uh, at a hotel and they were doing like weird sauces. Like I'm like a banana like cream curry i was like what is this you know yeah, what i mean but then when i tasted it i was like it's pretty damn good yeah, you know you just got to level out your your spice and oh, whatnot yeah. but um i remember feeling like the cuisines and what was going on down here is like i felt like the restaurants have a tough go at it because it's so seasonal yeah these summers down here i don't know how They're some killer. of them make it because the rents don't change no. the rent's super high and it's just like you know, you get this burst of clientele and then it goes totally dark. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, I guess that is a big challenge here. Like there's a lot of places that don't make it, you know, they say a lot of restaurants don't make it past the first year. Yeah. That's really unfortunate, you know, and it's usually the ones that are really <laughs> like passionate and trying to go out that don't make it. That, that really sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Florida season is it's crazy. <laughs> but did you want that for yourself coming here, like owning a restaurant? Was that like a thing? Like, did you? It's been a thought, you know, like, but it's like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like me, like what I learned was Asian food. You know, mm -hmm. what I love to do is like fermentation. Mm -hmm. I, I love fermentation. I've been, I've been really into baking a lot recently. You know, I've been working on it. Okay. Um, but like, what kind of restaurant is like the right restaurant here? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot that are successful, mm -hmm. but it's like, what do you really want to? tie yourself to same idea with the food truck like right what's gonna work yeah you know? so that's like the thing that i don't know if i'm sold on ever like having a restaurant maybe someday but yeah. right now that's not like in my plan you know? yeah see I, i'm kind of like negative on the whole restaurant thing because i feel like if you got to rely on a bunch of people to make your money that too also you're gonna have a hard time yeah. you know what i mean it's yeah. just like everybody's the workforce you know, is very difficult here right now too definitely you know, definitely I've, I've interviewed a lot of uh you know restaurateurs and they're just like we've been through like 150 people I to believe. find that right person that wants to work yeah be a manager that you can actually trust yeah it's like, I don't know, like the work ethic in Florida is much to be desired. It's, it's very yeah. different. So, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons I don't want to do a restaurant is just relying on too many people. Dude, I feel it. Like um, being a one man show is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you screw up, then it's on you. you right, know? <laughs> like, right, right. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, and like there's a lot of different, like there's a lot of movements right now, too. Like there's a lot of people that are like, and this is, I don't know, it's good and bad. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There's people that are like being very transparent with their salaries. There's people like, and this is like healthcare and stuff too. Yeah. And there's that. And then there's like, there's like a movement on like TikTok and stuff. It's like work your wage, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's it, seriously, yeah, right? <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Yeah, but they're <laughs> like, if you're paid to do this job, why are you gonna do all this other stuff for another job? Which like, I'm like, I'm that person that would do all the extra stuff. Yeah. But I get where they're coming from. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of places that will work people like crazy and then like they're disposable to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of understand both sides of the movement. It's that the workforce has definitely changed after COVID. Yeah. So I guess it's just like who wants to be there? It's going to be there, you know? And yeah. I feel like the restaurant industry, especially in Southwest Florida, is really feeling that right now. You know? I always feel like I'm kind of like jealous of the people that can run like two or three businesses. Yeah, how do you do that? I don't, I don't know how you do it because like yeah. with my life, I think a lot of people think, okay, you're a private chef. I see what you're up to that you run into Publix, grab all your stuff and you go to the house. It's not like that. <laughs> I got a fish guy. I got a meat guy. I got a produce guy. So a lot of my time is spent running around grabbing this stuff. And I'm a little bit of control freak where I want to see the stuff before I buy it. I think I'd be a little weirded out where, hey, I got a truck coming with some fish that's not so great. You know what I mean? It's like and that, that screws me up. Yeah. So it's like I get to go to the fish supplier. I get to see it in person and decide. Hey, I can call the client. Hey, I'm not so into the grouper today. Can we switch the fish red snapper or whatever. mahi, whatever. So that's kind of how I run things. But no, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think I like that, you know, flexibility where I'm allowed to, hey, I can touch my avocado, make sure it's right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, I can't put that control with somebody else. You yeah, know? and I mean, I feel it. I've, I've worked with a lot of the purveyors around here, you know, and there are some that are like, they're killer, they're on. They're yeah, yeah. On, you know, but then there are times you get stuff that you're like, wow, like, 
this sucks. Now what and I want. You have to send it back and forth a bunch of times. And right. <laughs> just waste time. You know? and, and sometimes being a chef, you have to go to a different store to find the right mango. Yeah. If they're hard as a rock, I got oh, okay. Yeah. I got to go to the next one. Hundred percent. Yeah. So that that's another challenge, but yeah. overall, it's been great. I was going to ask, what was your life like, or what was going on with you during COVID? How'd that affect you? So, I mean, I was working for major caterer around here. I was working for Crave Culinaire. You know, shout out, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was wild, man, because we were pumping. We were going hard. You know, it was cool. Um, and we were, you know, we were about to do a bunch of like major events, right? Mm -hmm. I remember like it was like Rookery on the Bay or something. It was something really big. And then we get the call that everything stopped. You have to, it's like 10 person to a room yeah. or whatever. And um, we had to shift everything. Yeah. So there was the idea of doing a like to go food. You know, mm -hmm. there was like the, you know, order ahead, then, you know, we drop it off for you, pick it up kind of thing, the Crave to Go um, program. And everything shifted to that. Yeah. It was wild because, like, you would think people wouldn't, you know, that, you know, I didn't think it was going to be as busy as it was. It was really busy for a while. Okay. So that's kind of how that shifted for a while. So you were in a kitchen producing production where it's not, I'm going off site ever. No, you were all trapped in that. While. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. you couldn't, you know, you, and a lot of people were really cautious. There's still people that are really cautious, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, at this point, it's kind of whatever. There's herd immunity. Right, right. Um, but like, yeah, it was it was wild because you go from like catering all these events, doing all this stuff at a, like a high volume, you know, and uh -huh. then it's like, wow, what are we gonna do, you know? Yeah. But that weird. idea really like saved that, you know. So that was that was really smart. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of COVID for me. Um, after that, you know, kind of went back to normal, and then it was just like we wore masks for a while, and then it was like whatever it's back to normal when you were doing these meals for people to go or whatever were you still at that point considered a full-time employee or were mm -hmm. your hours cut back any i mean well my hours were cut back but i was salaried so it was like, okay okay it was chill for me honestly okay um i still did like it was like over 40 hours probably for a while uh just because we were getting stuff together you know? right um but no never nobody like nobody lost their job um, everybody was still, you know, there. Um, it was That's just great. Just different for a while. You yeah. Know? See, for me, uh, um, I have very fond feelings of COVID because my business basically doubled. That's sick. So, so the deal was maybe I had two weeks off where things were kind of confusing and we didn't know what we were doing. But luckily for me, I had some pretty higher end clients that were stuck here that, hey, we're just gonna stay down here. You know, they travel the world and have different homes everywhere, but they're like, we're gonna stay in Florida and you're gonna come to us pretty often and we're just gonna invite our close friends. We're gonna space each other out and do whatever. And there I was like, go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, the grocery stores are open. I can still do my thing. And I got a lot of random calls that were still doing small dinner parties. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, my thing was, if they wanted me to wear a mask, I did whatever they wanted me to yeah. do to make them comfortable. And I think as a chef, um, you know, it is our, your job to make people feel comfortable and go with whatever they want you to do. You do yeah. it. And, and I got to say, the beauty of doing the private thing is, you know, you're basically in these people's lives for three or four hours and then that's it. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, it's like, like they say, like, what was it? Uh, Fight Club or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like single serving friends, you know, yeah. it's like single serving families. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun. So like, I remember some parties that they were like, uh, you're vaccinated, right? And I'm like, yeah. And then they'd be like, if you, if you don't mind, we have a physician assistant in the house. We're going to do yeah. the swab test. And I'm like, all right, we can do whatever. And sure enough, I was uh, definitely negative, but it was just a strange thing to go through. But you know, like when I see the masks, I mean, they worked out fine for me and you know I'm I'm actually pretty grateful that that little bump in the road happened that pushed our businesses higher. Yeah, private events stuff like that definitely got more. Yeah. I mean, I know restaurants took a beating. Oh, but they did. If you were in the private down. sector here in Florida, thank God DeSantis gave us the opportunity to go to work every day. Yeah. And uh, we we were very fortunate, I would say. Yeah, cuz a lot of places like even New York like it's totally different being up there. I was up there like month and a half ago two months ago something like that yeah and a lot of these places closed down a lot yeah. of big big places closed down because yeah. they couldn't handle it you know yeah and even up there like you'll see walking down the sidewalk and stuff now there's like outdoor seating that they created with like plywood and stuff it's uh -huh. just like 
wow, that's so different than it used to be. You right. Know? What were those first few parties like when you were going off site, going on, you know, these jobs and after COVID? Yeah. yeah what was COVID. that like? It was weird because it's like it, it's familiar. You know what I mean? Like you're, you know what you're doing and stuff, but it's like, how are these people going to act? You know, and you're, yeah. you're thinking about everything. Like for me, I was like, I didn't want to get COVID. I got COVID eventually, but okay, like okay. I didn't, uh, I didn't want to get it. So it was like making sure everybody was like washing their hands, hand sanitizer, had, having to add that to like the work vehicles, stuff like that. Um, making sure everybody had masks, making sure everything was like totally sanitized. Like if you're going to a client's home, like clean everything first with like Lysol or something, and like yeah, yeah. make sure it's solid before you do anything. Right, because right. Then there's like liability with like staff, and then with them too, you know. Right. So it was just like. It was different. It was like the same, but different. You yeah. Know? Just like that extra layer. You're not going to like talk as close as you would unless they like come up to you. You know what I mean? Like you're not going, you can go up to the table, but you're going to stand 10 feet back if you take your mask. Off. Right. You know, like, yeah, I had some rules that were like, Hey, put the food down and step back real mm-hmm. quick. And I'm like, yeah. all right, man, but I'm, I'm pretty okay. There was, <laughs> I'll there do whatever you want parties. me to do. Where there was like you guys set up in the garage, you stay in the garage and like wow, bring everything. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. I I've never had it that far yeah. away. Yeah, there was some stuff, man. So it was the same but different. You and, know? and then I remember like let's say they have like a giant island type bar. Yeah. Where sometimes they'd be like, make the food, have it ready, and then call us. And then and we'll come <laughs> grab our plates and go. Yep. And so I've done it that way too. We've had that too. <laughs> it was well, like go wait in the van and then come back in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I was going to ask, like, um, you know, I know you're kind of in a transition phase and I like to ask chefs, when do you decide at a certain point that, hey, I'm ready to go on my own and I'm going to change up instead of working for other people? When did you decide or what was the move? What was going through your head? Through so that? I don't know. I worked for, you know, I worked for a great company for like four years. You know? Yeah, I, I, I retained a, like a lot. I learned a lot there. I really pushed myself there. I went through a lot of different things there. Um, and I realized I'm like, I'm good at this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm good at menu development. I'm pretty good at talking to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm good at like events, you know, that's, that's what I like to do. Um, I've been in restaurants, you know, I've, I've done that. There, there's, there's good things about it. There's, you know, not so good things about it. Um, so after that, when I was like, you know, I'm going to, you know, move on from this. I worked there for four years. It was awesome. It was great. I mm-hmm. learned a lot there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like, I need to make the next move in my life. You know, I'm, I'm like almost 30. I want to, I want to make something of myself, you know, for me, not, mm-hmm. you know, for someone else. Mm-hmm. So when I moved on from there, at first I wanted to be like a banquet chef. Like I wanted to go work in a hotel. You know, I wanted to go do that kind of thing and kind of experience that on like an executive level. Corporate at an executive level is like, it's just something else yeah. coming from where I was at to that. That wasn't where I wanted to make my name for myself. So after that, I was like, you know, what am I doing? Like, I, I have like a vision in my head of what I want to do, right. what I want to produce and like a market that isn't really being touched by the others. Um, why wouldn't, why not just do it myself? The same right. thing you said earlier, it's like, if you can rely on yourself and maybe like a couple close friends and stuff like that, you know, it's on you. Yeah. If, if something goes wrong, it's on you. If something goes great, it's on you. And the kind of food I want to do and stuff like that, it's just, mm. it's easier to, to own it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's kind of what made me make that step um, in that, that, you know, phase right now, trying to figure out exactly what that step is. But I want to work for myself. I want to, I want to just kill it. I mean, I know? think it's awesome. I mean, I think you're at a good age to uh, go ahead and like do something different. Yeah. And like, you know, I mean, do it for yourself and kind of do it your way. I mean, there's nothing better than that. I mean, um, you know, I know all us chefs, like once we realize, oh, I see this guy doing a lot of food, I'll friend him or whatever. And we all become friends through uh, social media. Yeah. But I remember, you know, like, um, you know, one of your peers, the chef Leon, he was the first to approach me, you know, (laughs) direct message. Hey, chef, uh, how do you do this? Or tell me the the, the way to do it, like how much you charge, whatever. And I'm like an open book. I mean, if I can help another chef, I will. And uh, he he felt like he was ready. 
Yeah. And I'm like, look, man, you you could do you could do anybody could be just like me and do whatever I'm doing. You just got to put the time in oh, yeah. and just keep pounding the pavement. Yeah, Get man. that clientele. And and when I saw him that he moved on from his previous job and and I saw him working for a family on private jets and traveling. I was proud of him. Yeah. I was like, no, hell yeah, man, you're doing it. <laughs> he's a great guy. Cause, Cause it takes a lot of balls to kind of go be- out there. Cause like, what happens if nobody calls me? I can't pay for my cars. I can't pay for <laughs> yeah. my house, yeah. but, but you know, I've been doing it 10 years and I'm sure you're going to kill it, man. Thanks bro. I appreciate you. So if you have uh, any questions, you know, I'm like an open book and you can always come to me about anything. And I just like to support local chefs and, Thanks, man. Help out in any way I can. I just want to say thanks for coming on today. 100%. Thanks, and man. I know you're going to do big things. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, man. You. Have a good day. You too.